Welcome to the KIPPS Personal Training Application Podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia. I'm the president of KIPPS and Time to Train Fitness. We have something that if you are streaming, if you're a virtual trainer, even if you are a in-person trainer or instructor, we're gonna be talking about community and building that online presence over the last year. It's been something that I have admitted in different podcasts or interviews that it was something that I didn't emphasize when I should have at, and when building a virtual platform. So we have Kelly Coulter on our podcast today. Kelly, first, thanks for being our guest on the episode. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. Thank you. Yes, you have done an, a, a fantastic job. Every time that I see that the quality of the posts that you're putting out, the streams that you're doing, and the engagement that you're creating, it's amazing to see. And it's just a well-oiled machine. I, I say that every single time, or, and I think it every single time I see a post. So I'm really excited for this episode, if you can't tell, uh, because I, I like this stuff. I like talking about streaming and technology and the business theories behind it. So let's kick it off with... Kelly, what would you say were some of the difficulties in creating this online community? Oh, well, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start by telling you kind of the history. So um, I run Fit Pros Connect, which I know is similar to some things that you're associated with. (laughs) Um, But Fit Pros Connect is a Facebook community. It's got 8,500 vetted for fitness instructors and personal trainers in it. Wow. So when I say vetted, that means that you request membership and I grant membership, I grant access based on, um, I'll actually take a look at your profile and make sure that you're a fitness professional. Mm-hmm. I found in the beginning that I had a lot of, um, you know, lurkers, people wanting to come in and sell people Mm -hmm. who wanted to come in and maybe try to date a fitness instructor. And so it was really important to me to that, that feed be super clean and be all about fitness and not about selling equipment or selling MLM Mm -hmm. products to fitness Mm -hmm. instructors. So, um, I, I have, in addition to being a fitness instructor since 1994, I've also been a website professional since 1999. So Mm. I started out building websites. And then as the projects got bigger, I was leading teams and doing all sorts of online marketing activities. So I was aware in 2012, when Facebook started doing groups, Mm -hmm. and I went right away, all in and and put this group together. And um, yeah, yeah, I was really lucky with that. So my idea at first was that it would be a place for fitness instructors to share choreography. And it has turned into so much more than that. And so um, over the years, it grew and it was at about 6,000 when COVID started. And then um, I made a concerted effort to grow it since then. And now we're headed toward uh, 9,000 and I'd like to be at 10,000 um, before June. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, Facebook communities can be so much fun once you learn how to get traction from them. Yeah. I, I would say in, in my opinion with it, it's the same thing with social media in general. It's the consistent content that what are you, uh, posting to create that engagement, get people to interact, or even just get that wheel turning that, mm-hmm. uh, okay, do I need to create a schedule? Is this post going to get, it, does it impact people that they want to share? Um, do you have a, a process that uh, you go through or uh, that's something that you could share that, okay, okay, that's a good idea. I can pro- probably do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I have the way that I do it. And then I have the way that I kind of <laughs> suggest to my um, business accelerator participants that they do it. So I, I also run a, a business accelerator for fitness instructors and personal nice. trainers who are trying to build an online um, business. And the way that I suggest to them that they do it, because it's kind of the simplest and can be kind of laid out, Um pick a theme for your month and then break that into weeks, pick a theme for each week based on your theme for the month Mm -hmm. and then um, show up and then follow up that that's kind of the basics. 
So if you, if you pick a theme for your month, now you've got guidance into what you're going to be talking about each week. And then you break that into each week. If you just do one thing, one kind of big thing that gets you in front of your audience that positions you as the leader and the expert and shows them that you are there to mm-hmm. give, to nurture, to love, like how you do a podcast, mm-hmm. like how I do the Fit Pro show on um, Fit Pros Connect. So you can show up and you can you can um, have the subject of that one thing be around that that theme. Now, everything that you do throughout the week can be along the lines of that theme and it simplifies everything. You're not, you know, stressing every day, worrying about what to post. You, you know, basically what you're going to post and then you can just kind of, um, take, take the lead from that. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the part that I liked was the follow-up I think that that Mm. is the part that so many people miss on. And uh, Mm -hmm. I I think I've mentioned in other episodes that I do some consulting. And when you're, when I start working with individuals, they can, they understand, okay, I need to start doing something on a daily basis, creating content, but then they forget the importance of the engagement. If the people are engaging, they'll be like, oh, I want to engage. Well, then why aren't you you following up when somebody does comment on your post? Take so that true. Extra, take that extra time, follow it. If somebody does, immediately get back to them and like it or whatever that might be to show them that you care and that you're not just making the content, pushing it out there and just, oh, maybe it sticks, maybe it doesn't kind of attitude with it. But um, you know, there are two pieces to that. So mm-hmm. if you don't mind, I'm going to jump in please, on that. If, please. So there's the relationship building aspect, which is super important. Mm-hmm. I like to draw this kind of pyramid for my um, for my people. And at, we're at the bottom. Most of us, if if you're below fifty to a hundred thousand dollars in your online business revenue, if you have less than fifty paying subscribers, you're really at the bottom. And your whole job right now is to create community and mm-hmm. understand the people who are are in relationship with you online so that you can create products that resonate with them and so that you can start to build your business based on that. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that every time somebody interacts with you, you follow up, you, um, you know, you go back into the comments and you say, Hey, tell me more or, um, ha ha, that's funny, whatever creates relationship, builds trust, shows them that you care and you're not just posting some stuff out there to get a bunch of likes. It's not vanity metrics to you. Mm -hmm. The second piece of that is that Facebook wants to see that you are in relationship with these people. So let's say, and I know not everybody is doing this through a Facebook group, but I'm going to continue to come back to that as an example. This could also be your Instagram following. Let's say that, um, you know, you, you post something, somebody comments, you comment back, you end up in a direct message conversation. That's the flow that Facebook would like to see. And Facebook owns Instagram as well. That's, Mm -hmm. that's what they would like to see is that you are in actual relationship with this people versus if you, let's say that you went out and bought some done for you posts, which a lot of people do, and they can work really well. But the piece that we miss is the follow-up. So if you go out and you buy the done for you posts and you put them up and then everybody reacts and then you never go in and like or comment on any of the comments that come in from that, Facebook goes, okay, I see, I see you. I see what's going on. (laughs) And that's it. You won't get as much exposure. You won't get as much, um, they won't show your posts to as many members of your group or followers. Yeah, yeah, but the piece on top of that that i have to or that came to my mind was these are organic things that mm-hmm. when people are talking oh, well shall we do paid or what about organic and when you are t- making the effort to do organic posts and you're researching your hashtags and you're trying to build it that way you're not paying for followers those kinds of paying for posts that kind of stuff why not do everything that you can to make sure that that one post gets as much exposure as, as you can. That's all. That's one so of the things true. that just blows my mind. Sometimes it's like you did all this work and then you're just going to 
just stop just to not let it okay I, I tried when there's so much more you can do after just to make sure that you get your bang for your buck and you're doing every step along the way to make sure that you get that exposure because it's uh it, it, i just don't get it that's that's the, that's the bottom line of it. i just don't get why some people don't do that extra step um but they just don't, don't always realize, but there's, there, you know, there's a concept called micro content that I'm also really, really big on. And that's the idea that whatever you do, you should make five other pieces of content out of it. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. but, and, and I'm not doing this really well right now. I have to say, I've, I've had some interns and assistants that have helped me do a really good job of this at times. Um, but so when we do the Fit Pro show on Tuesdays at two o'clock on the the Fit Press Connect Facebook group. Um, one, uh, I have an intern that'll go in and make a graphic and kind of um, put in the main points. My uh, virtual assistant, Lonnie, will go in and do a post that has maybe a quote from it. And so I can basically make you know, five other pieces of content from that one live episode of the show. The other piece of that is that we could be taking video snippets out, using them on Instagram, Mm -hmm. you know, using them um, for IGTV and for, um, I'm trying to think if there would be a way to use it for reels. I mean, definitely in the story, we could use little pieces in the story. We could use it in IGTV. So, So taking anything that you do, and then just going a mile deep on it rather than just continuing to like take every piece of spaghetti and throw it at the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, so I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of that because it's, I do something similar with, um, and I'm, I've lectured at this at some conferences. I call it YouTube center digital marketing. And essentially the way that I do it is I create content for YouTube tutorials. Uh, and then I break up that content for social media that can be utilized for months. And as so for me, the way that I look at it is that it gives purpose to the content that I'm making. I know that I'm making content that fits the guidelines of YouTube, uh, that it's in the four to seven minute range. It has good quality stuff that people are going to be able to take something from it. But then the piece that I like is that it just makes my social media easier to utilize after that. I know that I can just pull these little snippets from it and then utilize those after. And it just gives the consistency factor for me and hopefully drives people to watch the full thing. So I've, I've actually seen how you do this with your, your episode. Cause I, when I went on your, um, your show, I saw it after how you took these, the little things after and I was like, oh, and then I would say the added benefit of that is that then you get the person who's on it, then they want to share it. Cause I know I did because yeah. it's, uh, it's just networking in that way. So it's such a, uh, it's, it's a great way to break into that again, in an organic way that you're not paying the other person to, to share it, but all of a sudden now somebody's other network gets exposure to it and it just helps your business at the end of the day. You know, that's so true. And um, I'm going to piggyback on what you just said and I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit, I'll give you a little peek behind the kimono on kind of how the fit pro show has evolved. So when I first started doing it, coronavirus had just started and I was running my, my website marketing agency. I've, I've had a, a website agency since 2014. I've actually shut it down at this point. And, um, but when coronavirus started, that's what I was doing was my website agency. I just had the group and I was just the admin of it. Mm -hmm. I'm laying awake at night and I'm like, I have this huge group of fitness instructors of personal trainers. I don't know who now cannot feed their family because they've had complete income stoppage. Mm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And all I could think of is I know how to tell people to go online and, you know, create a PayPal subscription and do these things so they could be making some money. Mm -hmm. And so I just started going on every day and talking about these things. Well, you know, because at that time we were all so, um, you know, everyone was, was just like, what do we do? And trying to get out there. So now people are approaching me. Can I come on and talk about, you know, this and that. And the show is getting, you know, thousands of views every day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was crazy. I mean, I don't suggest a trial by fire like that because Mm -hmm. 
here I am with a group of thousands of instructors. And the first time I go live, I've got like 700 people watching me live. (laughs) (laughs) Trust me, you'd rather have your small audience while you're learning. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, so I, I go on and I, I start doing this and then I'm next thing I know I've got the fit pro show. So then, um, I said, I, I can't come on every day. It's too much. So I start doing twice a week. And then I start realizing when I have guests that they do share it out. And so I said, okay, that's how we're going to, that's one of the things we're going to do to grow this group is we're going to have high profile guests on, and then we're going to ask them to share it with their audience. And we're only going to air it within this private group. So in order for their audience to see it, now their audience has to come join the group. So it was kind of one of the strategies that I used to, to build up. Um, Now we do broadcast it publicly. So it's on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. Um, But having guests can be a really powerful way of, uh, of be getting in front of their audience as well as getting in front of yours. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, for the fit pros that are listening to this and they might be there, how do I apply this to my own model? And a guest that we had on the podcast in the middle of last year, that she, when she switched her business to fully virtual, she started a podcast and she realized that she could build value for her members with her podcast by pulling in high profile trainers, instructors, people from other industries into her podcast that she was actually in uh, in Jordan and she could pull people from the States, from Canada, from across the globe to speak about the topics that they are experts on. Now, all of a sudden her members, they're like, oh, wow, like this is a high profile person. They're talking about you know, sleep. They're talking about nutrition, whatever that might be. Now you're creating that value in a whole nother way. That's what vo- virtual and the, the internet does for you. You're not just solely confined to your city and what your area right there you can pull people in that your members be like oh wow you know this person i mean i just did that a couple months ago with one of my friends who's a celebrity chef and now i get messages or whenever i see somebody uh that is a part of our uh part of our group they're like i just saw your friend on tv again like yeah he's he's a celebrity chef that's that's, that's what he does. Oh, yeah, that's what he does. He goes on TV. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's such a great tool that way with the, the networking and exposure. And I mean, well, it also helps but, you build your own network and just yes. really create. Like you and I are friends because we've appeared on shows together and mm-hmm. for each other. Mm-hmm. There's actually something that I've been ho- trying to hold on to it for a bit in my head, and I'm like, oh, don't forget it. Don't forget it. Website development. I remember when I first started, uh, so a little small story for the people listening that the company that I own now, Time to Train Fitness, that was actually the first company I ever started. And there was this period where I stopped it because I wasn't doing live boot camps anymore. But that was the company that I first started uh, with a buddy out of college. And we were looking at getting a website made. And at the time, the person uh, we had reached out to a company, it was a referral. And there was no way we were fresh out of college that we could pay. I think it was like, I think it was like $1,500 for a website. Mm. And we were just, mm-hmm. we're just like, we, we can't pay that. We don't have any money. We're just straight out of college. And so I was just like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a stab at it. And I built my first website off of GoDaddy. It wasn't great, but it got the job done. And then it just evolved after there. Then after that went to a uh what is it called uh, squarespace website and then after that i was like okay i'm i'm evolving i'm gonna try wordpress and now i use wordpress for everything but uh th- those skills are something that have saved my businesses so much money but also evolved into consulting as a fit pro and yeah. there were so many other people that need that type of assistance and as long as you can offer them a service that's going to save them money it's value to them you can potentially make more a side i don't want to call it a side hustle but it's a side business that you don't know what can come from it you know you know it's so funny about websites and it's always been this way is that the the price range is all over the place yeah. and you i i had a client that i think I charged her twenty or thirty thousand dollars for this website, but her first quote 
was over two hundred thousand dollars for the same kind of functionality and um you know it it just really has to do with kind of the size of the company Mm -hmm. I, i mean here's the thing nobody's charging enough for them nobody's people are not not there not, aren't a lot of people that are really getting rich or making a lot of money off of them. We, as website developers, just like fitness instructors and personal trainers, can, tend to undervalue ourselves. And the fact is, it's one of those skill sets where people look at it and think, well, why shouldn't I just do that myself? It's like everybody sings in the car so that everybody knows how to sing until they get in an audition on American Idol. <laughs> But you, you, and these days you can do it yourself and you should do your first couple ones yourself. You, you shouldn't pay somebody f- these days for a website until you really need to, mm-hmm. like until it's got some special custom functionality or until you want it to be, you know, head and shoulders more beautiful above anybody else's. And you, you just need like specialty expertise. Yeah. Oh yeah. And- but I'm a big believer in DIY. Oh yeah. I DIY it up and the website stuff. That's one of the things that sometimes I just, I'll say from, from a consulting perspective, that's where I have picked up people because they come to me, they know that I'm pretty good with what I do with websites. And they ask me like, Oh, this person quoted me X, Y, Z. And I'm like, but you don't really need that many pages. It's it's really just, yeah. a, you don't need a thousand dollar website you or a two thousand dollar website you are just a really small business you could probably do like three different pages on it and i just usually will charge them for my time and it saves everybody money um but the and this is the thing about podcasting it's crazy thing is and i always talk about this in in podcasts is how there is some free planning that goes into an episode. And I admitted prior to this to Kelly that I know that this episode will be packed with information and what your wife is excited for. This is, we've only started on one question for the day and <laughs> we're almost at, almost at 30 minutes, I believe. And, but it's the value of the podcast. And I think to keep the, <laughs> I got to keep the episode going with this is with what you do with the fit pro connect, and I always have to be careful with it because I we joke about how I'm associated with the show called Fit Pro Connection, um, Fit Pro Connect. After I went on your your show uh, with uh, Janice Janice Jakes of Fitness Fest, I received uh, quite a few messages from people asking me uh, about my streaming setup and that and those types of things. And one of the things I think people struggle with is that they don't know what to do after they create content and somebody reaches out to them. How do they get them into their pipeline? Do you have Mm. a process of turning a question into a customer? Hmm, So um, I'll have to say these days, I, I I think where you're going with this is email list building. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you a double edged kind of um, response to that. Um, the way that I bring in clients is I'll be fully transparent. So fit pros connect is my free group, right? That's where I nurture, love, give value, just give, give, give. Mm -hmm. Then I've got a boot camp that teaches instructors and personal trainers, the beginning skill set of get online, get paid. So I teach them how to create an offer, how to put it out there into the world, who they should be offering to right away, how to grow their audience so they can be offering to more people, how to price, and then how to um, how to structure their, their suite of offers correctly so that they're not spending time on the things that will just drain them and not make them money. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the five core tenets of the boot camp. Laws. Some people from the boot camp would like me to be their coach for the year and they join the accelerator. And so the accelerator mm. is really the thing that makes the money, right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of my, my funnel or my flow or my customer journey. Um, in terms of email, and, and I, I say that because it's a valid one for a lot of fitness professionals to learn and implement it is a valid way to bring in 
customers, especially if you're doing high ticket kinds of yeah. things. Mm-hmm. So that's something we could talk more about later if you are interested or it's something that they could learn from me through the bootcamp or through the accelerator. Um, in terms of just straight up email list building, I suggest doing community events to mm-hmm. grow the email list. So I just, for my for my yoga subscription, I also teach yoga online. For my yoga subscription, I just had um, a community yoga event and people were able to come in and take the class. But what they had to do is go to a landing page that took their email address that puts them on my mailing list. Mm -hmm. So that's one way that I bring people on. Um, If you do have a Facebook group, which I suggest that you create one, they are great thing to have. Um, And Facebook really likes it when you have groups. Do not waste your time with a Facebook business page. (laughs) <laughs> if you've got a fan, <laughs> that, that could be a whole other thing we should probably talk about. Um, <clears throat> but if, so if you've got a Facebook group, you're allowed to ask questions before they join your group. You can have three questions and you'll, you'll experience it. That if you go to fit pros connect, you'll be asked three questions and then um, we'll look at you and we'll let you in. If you're a fitness professional, one of those questions is what is your email address? Because we put them on the mailing list to get the newsletter. Mm -hmm. So something that popped in my mind when we were talking or when you were mentioning all these different items with it, with your show, I will say, and also the open group, it's free. And I just mentioned before you vetted them. I think one of the issues that people sometimes will face is that they don't understand that this is going to lead to business down the road. They think that, oh, I've been putting in all this effort on all these things. And it mm-hmm. doesn't, have, and uh, we're talking about the free group here, but it could be your blog. It could be your YouTube mm-hmm. channel. It could, there's so many different things that you don't see an immediate return on, but mm-hmm. they are ways to build the business down the line. Do you have any advice for people like that? <laughs> so this is, um, we do this in the boot camp actually. What I see a lot of times is, um, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I'm going to drone on for a minute. And I'm so sorry if this gets a little long, but I think it'll be good. On Friday of my boot camp, I explained what I like to call the online fitness offer ladder. And that is um, the customer journey for an online fitness professional. And it's usually they your customer encounters you in some way, in some free way, whether that's... Um, whether that's a Facebook group or whether that's a post on your personal profile, or maybe they know you because your son plays baseball with their son, whatever. Then you've got entry level offers. These are cheap things that might bring people in like workshops, uh, events, different things. Then you've got your monthly subscription. So that's kind of the core of how you're going to make your money. If you're an instructor, if you are a personal trainer, then you've got other ways that you're probably structuring things. Although I do, I like monthly subscriptions for personal trainers as well. And then there's the possibility that you might have something that a lot of people call a signature transformation, which is where you are bringing people from point A to point B. You know, they are a size 10, they want to be a size six, um, or they drink too much and you're going to help them stop drinking. And you're going to do that through your personal training regimen, like whatever you really have a depth and breadth of experience in, and you feel like you can help people with that could be a signature transformation and you can charge a higher price for that. So each of these things, as I'm going through them is a higher price point, and then you can have premium services. And that's where kind of um, one-to-one personal training would probably fall in. Mm-hmm. Um where was I going with this? (laughs) Okay. So I know where I was going. So a lot of people, when they start a business, they want to start with the free, right? So Mm -hmm. they start doing all the free things. They start blogging, they start creating the free Facebook group. And they're just like nurturing and doing all of these things. They're like, where is my money? I am about to starve. So I suggest that you start with monthly subscription. So you're not starting at the bottom of that offer ladder. You're starting in the middle And you do that by figuring out what your monthly subscription is going to be, going to the people who already know, like, and trust you, like past clients, Mm -hmm. past people who have taken your class, um, past employers, 
uh, your the HR person at your husband's work might want to partner with you on a program for the people at you know that office. Mm-hmm. Um, so go to people who know, like, and trust you. Offer that core service to them. Then once you've got an income, then start working on your free stuff. That's good. That's really good. And I think that that's the the struggle that many people uh, partly faced uh, was the free, but not the uh, not mm-hmm. seeing the income because they, in the last year, how many people started doing free and mm-hmm. I don't know how to turn any of these into paying customers. Yeah. And yep. I can't, I've, you probably saw that question a million times on your page. I have all these people oh, yeah. and I don't know how to make anything off of it. And, um, oh gosh. And they're so scared. I still have people coming into the boot camp. So what is it? We're almost a year out from the pandemic starting. I still have people in the boot camp every single time that are still teaching for free. Oh, wow. So I'm doing it again in the end of April. And I bet I will have people come in and say, yes, I'm still teaching for free. And I give them a script on Monday of the boot camp. I say, okay, if you're teaching for free. Here's what you're going to do right now. As soon as we get off this call. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm shocked as people can probably tell by the way that words are coming out of my mouth and I don't mean it in a mean way. It's just, it's, I feel the same way when people talk to me and they have not already started streaming uh, or they did not at all. And they're like, I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, right now, like it's been a, it's been a year. What have you been doing? It, where, where, where was your time being spent? How were how were you making money? And but it's just one of those things. Okay, let's just let's just start. Let's figure it out. Let's let's uh, let's get you going. But um, next kind of question here about the way that you do your stuff. And I've already said this before. It's quality. It's great stuff. The, the presentation of it. Uh, the I've I've been on the back end of it when you're getting ready for a show, and so I've seen. Um, and so I have a pre, an appreciation of the flow of it, how you can change your camera angles, all that kind of stuff. And it's stuff that not many people can pick up right away, but it looks great and it comes across, it is very professional and it's stuff that people want to engage with. How did you, how did you learn that? Is, was the, is it just come natural or is it practice? What are those, um, did you ha- have a, a background that you're like, okay, I kind of know this, I'm going to apply it over here. <laughs> Well, thank you for saying that. That's a high compliment coming from you. Um, so the first thing that I will say is that um, I I watched all of my videos probably for the first six months that I was going online. So I really have only been doing the Facebook Lives as intensely as I've been doing them for a year. And really, I've only been doing video for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I would, I would watch and I I would say, okay, well, maybe I need to arrange the room like this. So it was just trial and error, trial and error. If you go back to the videos from March and April of last year, I was broadcasting from my dining room and I was kind of like cornering myself so that I was facing the window. And, you know, I was always looking for like, what's the best background. And then I arranged this, the, the other room of across from my dining room, which, you know, would technically be like a formal living room or office so that I could be facing the window. And I just made kind of a nice looking backdrop behind me. And then that has changed. It's just evolved over time, but I think it's really, really key to be facing some natural light if at Mm -hmm. all possible. Mm -hmm. That's what I get lots of compliments on my lighting. And that's all it is, is I purchased a standing desk And it rolls around the room. So when I'm not using it, it rolls into the corner. And Mm. when I am on air, I roll it in front of the window and uh, the sun is shining on me. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. This is something that I was actually thinking about this morning because um, I was doing a Zoom meeting yesterday and I have a variety of cameras, as people could probably guess. And (laughs) it really just depends upon where I am in my in my office or if i'm in the um the place where we film and the one thing that i can say if you don't have a high quality camera lighting makes such Mm. a difference it can make a bad camera look good and on my my desk where i work where i film uh, webinars where from lectures or if i'm doing a streaming lecture i have an overhead light 
and I have an older laptop that the camera is not good at all. And all I have to do with it is just turn off the, the light that's natural, that's usually in my office and just turn on my overhead light, which is an LED panel. And boom, all of a sudden it looks clear, looks crisp, and it makes such a difference. So if you don't mm -hmm. have access to a nice camera, that's something, it's a quick little fix that you can implement and it'll make such a difference for the people participating or listening in, or sorry, not listening, watch, viewing um, whatever stream you're doing. Yeah, it's so, so true. Now, I will say I love my Logitech Brio. So I have the Logitech Brio 4K and that has the light correcting technology in it. Mm. So I really like that. It's also got a decent microphone. So mm. if you if you need to buy one or the other, if you buy that, you can kind of get away with both. I love my my Blue Yeti, which is the microphone that you'll hear me on when I'm doing the Fit Pro show. Um, but the the Logitech is the first thing that I would buy if I were going to buy equipment yeah. along with the, uh, whatever you need to do to get in front of a window. What, what <laughs> I think <laughs> my, my equipment list is like priority number one, get in front of a window. Um, so, <laughs> so with furniture sliders, I think are my equipment number one, <laughs> that might not be the most popular answer, but put all of your furniture on sliders so that you can move your room around and figure out how you need it when you're broadcasting and then you can put it back. Then number two would be um, whatever you need to make yourself sound good because when you are working out on camera, people are need to hear you more than they need to see you. Mm -hmm. um, they need to be able to like glance up and see what position you're in. But if you are pixelated or you know a little blurry they can still see what position you're in versus if you if they can't hear you they're not going to stick with you yeah so definitely something so that they can hear you and then um the third piece of equipment is that logitech brio because yeah. it's amazing oh yeah so i got a, another joke that <laughs> but the slide is that that's the first time i've ever heard somebody use that as on their equipment list but it's so true <laughs> It's very true that. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, on Wednesday of the boot camp, we spend the whole day just looking at pictures of people's rooms. And then we make suggestions to each other of how they could improve their setup. Mm -hmm. And you would just be amazed at the things that I see that I'm like, okay, well, if you just, um, this is not a real example. It's never happened. But like, if you just moved like the dog poo <laughs> and like maybe pick that up, that would be better. <laughs> but it's stuff like that. Like, Hey, could you clean off that nightstand? Or I don't ever want to see somebody's nightstand or bed. Yes. I think it's way too personal, but like, it, you know, clean up the stuff that's on the side table, stuff like that. I, I did a, a blog post. Uh, I can't remember how many months ago it was, but it was after a few months of uh, people reaching out. So with the time to train, we get a good amount of people were wondering if we're hiring. And when I do go through a process of speaking with them, one of the first, I used to do this. I don't do it that often anymore uh, just because I found more efficient ways, but I would ask them, okay, um, let's do, set a meeting, but let me, you know, do it in your workout space so I could see what things look like and to get an idea of where you're at. And I've had people that they just turn their camera on. And I'm just, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? This is, you, you expect this to look good. Mm -hmm. And there were still people that I've seen that you don't want to take a little extra time. And you see people that make uh, more too often. I feel like people will make an excuse of, well, I don't want to have to arrange my house this way. You don't want to make your, where you're making money look professional. You know, this is your money. Yeah. Maker, and that's why, uh, when when we when I Janice and I came on your show, we did it in uh, where we film um, in my garage, which we built a, a standing wall, but it's all decorated. It's it's made to look professional, and that's a I mean I can't it was like a few hundred dollars to build it, mm -hmm. but it looks great, and that's where we can do uh, our setup. And it's great to hear that that's what you do part of your boot camp because it's such a a process that. Mm -hmm. People need to understand that you're setting people are going to look at it and people get distracted. That's like one of the things that I got from somebody who was a professional editor. She was saying how those every every cord, every little nick in the wall, 
people will get distracted by it. They'll, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll, just, too, they'll just focus on it and they'll see, okay, well, why, why are those cords over there? and not paying attention to you anymore. So if you can eliminate distractions and just make your background look as professional as possible, it's going to go ways with your business. So I like that a lot. Well, we got to Yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I, I completely agree. And I have, I'll, I'll tell you this, the, the room that I've got, uh, you know, you, you complimented it. So I'll, I'll say this. I think I I'm trying to add up what I've spent in this room. There are two paintings behind me that each of those were $40 from Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, the couches were given to me. I, I picked them because, or I put them in this room because they are low profile, really clean looking. You know, I wouldn't want to see somebody's couch if it looked like a lazy boy or like <laughs> if it had like, you know, oil stains on somebody's head. <laughs> But I, they look professional, you know, they look like you would see them in a doctor's office or something. So mm-hmm. I, I was like, okay, those can go in here. Um, so I got these for free. I, I think I bought throw pillows that were $15 each from like a furniture store. And then I, I think the most expensive thing in this room was probably the standing desk that rolls around was $250. And the, um, the lamp table that's sitting beside me was maybe $80, but you know, everything it's, it's just a matter of like, yeah, putting a critical eye to it and making sure that it looks like clean and professional. Like if you walked into your lawyer's office or your accountant's office, would you want to see that? It, how was, how would that make you feel if you walked in and you saw like a, an old lazy boy in your, <laughs> in your doctor's office? <laughs> I, I feel like I just like that you're using the term lazy boy because I feel like I haven't seen those in, in Ohio, but it makes me laugh because it, it's true. Well, my husband and I have this huge thing about the, the living room chairs because he wants the big lazy boy and, <laughs> you know, I want it to look nice and clean. So we have this compromise where he has this like nice leather chair, but it's not the big cushy one that he would like. To have. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's why. It's uh, the part that I've taken away from it is that it's pre-planned. It's all pre-planned with it. And mm. it's the same with uh, where I'm recording this podcast episode. If the camera was on, you would see my background. I've talked about this in lectures and podcasts is how it looks nice that we have basically repainted my office. My wife built some um, floating shelves and then she decorated them. There's no way that I would be able to pick out any of this stuff that's on there. I'm not. Uh, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. And I admit it. That's why I get the help from my wife. But it looks professional and it looks like something that, oh, wow, like this just looks great. Even though the tension is on me, it's mm. all pre-planned. And that's yeah. the big point that I think uh, people should take away with this. And so, yeah, with- absolutely. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a video snob. Like I, I, I've heard some people out there just preaching, like it really needs to look like, um, almost like a production. And Mm -hmm. I I don't agree with that. I think you're, you're teaching from your living room and that's okay, but do take five minutes to move some stuff. Don't have, um, you know, dog food sitting out or, um, yeah, make it look like if you walked in and that was somebody's office that you were paying a lot of money to, would you feel good about that? Yep. Yep. That's, that's actually something that was brought up last week to me when I was talking with, um, one of my instructors that she teaches out of her living room, but she's developing a lecture for next month's fitness fest conference. And she was saying that there's the steps that she takes prior to pressing the play button. She has three kids and she streams mm-hmm. from her living room, but she makes sure that she takes the time to not make it look like their playpen, even though that's where they do play. She's mm-hmm. not going to have toys in the background. She's going to make sure it looks clean and looks nice. And uh, it's just, extra extra time into it but uh we got to get to the podcast takeaways right now this is okay. that with every podcast that we do i always talk about where this question comes from because if, if i just say it, people are like what like this that's a random question but um months ago and and i feel like i say this each time because i don't remember when i, I saw this but there was an individual that did 50 
Iron Man's in 50 states in 50 days. It's crazy. Um, and he was asked on Twitter three lies about doing Iron Man competitions. And I like that. Then I was like, hmm, I'm going to apply that to the podcast, but with fitness. So, Kelly, what are three lies that you've encountered in the fitness industry? <laughs> so I have to admit, I, I, um, I didn't see this at the bottom of the document till just now, so I really have to put some thought into it. Um, so, oh, well, the first is one that I told myself for the first 25 years that I was in the fitness industry, and that is that you had to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, and what I've realized since I've really spent the last year completely in community with Fit Pros Connect is that fitness instructors and personal trainers come thankfully in every shape, every size, every race, every gender. Um, mm -hmm. There is a lid for every pot and that is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I, like it. Um, I think the second would be that uh, it's a lie that we tell ourselves in the beginning. And I, I think a lot of us that have been doing it for 25 years have figured out that it's not true. And we kind of have gone the other way, but you'll hear people just continually assuming that people go to the gym to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And that is so, so far from true. I, yep. the, the people that are at the gym are there because of the community, because they want to keep their mobility, because they want to live longer, because they want to lower their blood sugar. The people who are actually there using the gym have either already lost their weight or that's not why they're there. But that assumption that people come into class to lose weight is so dangerous. Mm -hmm. So that would be my number two. You know, my number three, It's this is going to sound a little coachy or salesy, but it's something I saw somebody say the other day. And I thought, hmm. Um, so I saw somebody say, it was another coach, and he said, it's a lie when people say that you could get rich working 10 hours a week. And I don't think we're anybody's here to get rich. And I don't think you can get rich working 10 hours a week, but I do think that you can make money doing fitness. If you are willing to build your community mm -hmm. and you don't have to kill yourself doing it. Yeah. That's cool. it's, I hope that didn't sound too salesy because I, I, I don't mean it to be, but I just, I really took objection to that. Like nobody, nobody went into fitness to get rich. First of all, mm -hmm. I, I don't think any of us thought we were going to get richer. If we did, we were sadly mistaken because <laughs> fitness instructors and personal trainers are, have been on the bottom of the food chain forever. But do I mm -hmm. think you can make a significant income and, you know, work as many hours as you were working at the gym? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. The, the just to comment on that last part, because there's another one that I want to comment on. I remember when mm -hmm. I first entered the industry and it's one of those things where <laughs> we were joking earlier about the age difference and I don't want to bring that. <laughs> I don't want to say when, when this year was, um, <laughs> but, uh, when I entered, it was, it was right before, right after actually the, um, the economy took a big hit. And I remember when I joined the industry, the, a lot of the trainers that that worked at the facility. So I started working at a big facility. It was 40 plus, I think 30, 40 plus trainers, very big gym. And they were saying, oh man, you know, prior to the last year, we were just raking it in with commissions, with sales. And I feel like I heard that five, six trainers were making uh, six figures. Like what? In the industry? And it's like, yeah, like we were, I mean, I feel like some of the trainers had nicer cars than many of the people in the area. I was like, dang. But the industry and it's with the hours that you work that when I, when you mentioned, I was like, what? Like trainers, they work such long hours for sometimes very little pay because that's the industry. You sometimes spend hours just waiting between, but you're trying to find ways to mm -hmm. pick up new clients. And it's sometimes a, a struggle, which is why people leave the industry so quickly uh, because they got to pay bills and all that kind of good stuff. Or but, work full time in order yeah. to support their career in the fitness industry, which is what I did for 20 years. Yeah. 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 And 
Um, but I do want to quickly comment on the uh, the first one about looking the part because it was something that you actually mentioned on when we came on your show about the and I've I've probably said it a handful of times. I I took it from you. Um, <laughs> was talking about good. The, thank you. <laughs> the populations that don't go to the gym and the population mm-hmm. that needs our help, uh, that needs um, guidance in health and, and wellness, and yet they don't even consider going to the gym. And if you could figure out ways to help them, I think the word um, it, it, or the thing to think about is how to get to them, but there's a huge majority, overwhelming majority of people don't go to the gym. And if you could figure out the way to get to them and make them feel comfortable or just along their journey, you will be Mm -hmm. fine as a fit pro. And so I like that you mentioned that one because it always reminds me of when, when I heard you say that, and it's, it's so true because sometimes we think so much about all the competition, oh, everybody's Mm -hmm. doing virtual or the, or the big, the big boys are going to push us out of the industry. Well, there's still an yeah. overwhelming majority of people that have no, uh, aren't even consider going to a big, um, like a Peloton or yeah. going to a big gym and you could help them. So true. Absolutely. You know, um, so Peloton and Beachbody and Les Mills on Demand and some of the other big um, streaming services, they're really all competing for the same 10 to 20% of the population, which those are the people who have a fitness practice in some form or fashion already, have some level of fitness at least. Um, We as fitness instructors, we all have our, and personal trainers, we all have our own um, unique secret sauce and our, our own unique experience and education and background. So, we have the ability to go out and serve niche populations in a way that was never possible 10 years from now. Just the fact that we're not bound by geography and then the fact that we can go out and create our own audience, we can find all of those, you know, pots that we can be the lid for and assemble them into an audience and make offers to them and make a living from doing them. Yep, exactly. Exactly. I like it. I like it. Kelly, before we sign off here, can you give the audience again, um, dropping your links, all that kind of social media stuff? Can you give the audience all that information? All right. So the best place to find me is fitprosconnect.com. From the homepage on fitprosconnect.com, you can link to the Facebook group, which is I'll tell you the the link to it here as well. It's facebook.com slash groups slash fitness pros ideas. It used to be called fitness pros ideas and I changed it, but Facebook won't let me change the URL. <laughs> so it's groups, fitness pros ideas. Um, you can also find a button on the homepage of fit pros connect that will link you to that Facebook page. My boot camp is happening again, April 26th to the 30th, and that's at fitprosconnect.com slash bootcamp. That is a $37 bootcamp, and you get five days of instruction with me. Nice. We do a lesson every day. We do an implementation session. I literally had somebody light on fire the last time we did bootcamp and make $2,000 that week during wow. bootcamp. She has since joined the accelerator and I think she's at almost $8,000 Wow! in like four weeks. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. It's so, so much fun. We, I mean, it's life changing. Mm -hmm. I've just had so many people come in and just really get the concepts, go with it and start, you know, replacing their income and maybe even making more than they were making before all this mess started. Yep. 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 And are you always on Instagram? Instagram is Fit Pros Connect Insta. Perfect, perfect, great episode, Kelly. I I knew that uh, putting together this podcast episode that we would go off on a lot of topics and that <laughs> it would just easily go because I just from the shows, from the posts I've seen you do, the way that you develop it, I know that you know your stuff and that putting you and I in a podcast, it w- this would happen. So I appreciate it. I really do that. You came on the episode, you brought it and thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Let's make it a regular thing.